Good morning from Cuenca, Ecuador. It's very early, the sun is just coming up. Today we are driving from Cuenca to the southern Amazon. So we're driving from Cuenca to Hualaquiza. The last time we had a road trip, we drove to Tonsupa. We drove to Esmeraldas. And I wasn't sure what we were going to see, but we actually saw some really cool things. And so this time I'm going to shoot video again and let's see what we can find. I actually think it'll be quite interesting driving from the Andes and the altitude to the Amazon where it's going to get quite humid. So that landscape should change quite a bit. I want to share this right here. Andreas just surprised me with it this morning. So he made this sign for me. A lot of you don't know this, but I actually, the reason I can stay in Ecuador is I have a website called Bacon is Magic. It's about the best food around the world. It's got recipes, restaurant chips from the last 12 years of travel. And uh, you know, the digital nomad visa process was really difficult for me. So he's been awesome at just making a big deal of it. All right, so let's go. Just a little bit of background on this trip. So we are going to Wallachiza. We're gonna stick in the southern part of the Amazon. And I would call this like an Amazon light kind of trip. So we're not gonna be doing any crazy um, Amazon tours or anything like that. I'm gonna do that the next trip to the Amazon. But this time what we want to do is just check out the different villages, check out the food, see what they're doing with some community tourism. And so there will be no, you know, hiking through the jungle and crying. I'm sorry. Not this time. I don't want to cry on a hike this time. Are we hiking at all? Mm -hmm. No, we're not hiking. But we are eating a lot of food. So what should I expect from the Amazon in southern Ecuador and is it different from northern Ecuador? Nothing and everything. <laughs> you want me to develop that concept? Yes, tell me why it's nothing and everything. Because it is not like the Amazon that you read on books or watch on films and stuff like that, but at the same time it is. The place that we're visiting, called Wallachisa, is actually a cute uh, town. Well developed, lots of infrastructure. But at the same time, if you just take daily excursion, you will really get to know the that green and white Amazon that you might, you know, dream about. So we are not doing the day tours. We're just gonna check out the town. Yes, so yes. now we're gonna check out the town, we're gonna lay the framework. We're gonna check out towns, we're gonna see what it's like. And then in the fall, I'm gonna do some of the tours. When I have more energy. And maybe I'm in better shape. Okay, so the drive from Cuenca to Wallachiza is three hours, 20 minutes. If you want it to be less, you gotta go earlier in the morning. Andrea said we were going to stop off in Wallaceo, one of my absolute favorite little towns in Ecuador, the most delicious. And so I was like, oh, where are we going to eat? And what did he say? I don't know. <laughs> the good thing about Wallaceo is it doesn't really matter. I've never had anything bad here. It's about half an hour outside of Cuenca and it is so delicious. <laughs> Alright, popping in to get some tortillas. I've shared the tortillas here in another video. They are so good, cooked on the tiesto. I'm getting the choclo, which are kind of sweet. And then this is just picking them up and eating them in the car because we're a little bit late. So we've got to make some time up because we've got another stop to eat. Also, if you want to stay here and eat, they've got ensoboyado. Now, I don't eat in Cebollado when I'm not on the coast, but this place is so popular, it makes me think maybe someday I need to try it. I just saw a guy putting ketchup in his Cebollado right over there. Ketchup, hot no, sauce. hot sauce. No, he also put ketchup in before the hot sauce. He's a lunatic. That's an ostrich egg right there. Whoa. Okay, and these are goose, criollo chicken. Those are fruit. So 
that was just a quick stop because we have to keep going. So in my smoothie, kind of my go-to is spinach, ginger, beet, and carrots. I don't put any anything sweet in it at all. Mm. It's so delicious. And I feel like, you know, for $1.25, for me, it really kicks off the day. I'm always trying to get more vegetables in me. And then I think one of the really great road trip foods are actually these tortillas. So tortillas here are not at all like what you would have in uh, Mexico or North America. What they actually are like pancakes. So the ones that we got are choclo. They're made out of sweet corn. Now traditionally you would have it with morocho which is a, uh, a sweet corn drink as well and it's warm and it's got some spices in it. It kind of has that like warm spicy flavor. Mm. Mm. You don't need to eat this with maple syrup or any kind of syrup because inside this corn is so sweet you don't need to add anything to it it's so soft mmm fluffy these are perfect they're cooked on that tiesto so they have this like charcoaly flavor no oil used at all these are actually quite healthy healthy ish healthy ish perfect for a road trip so there are three routes that will take people from Cuenca, from the Andes, to the Amazon, uh, if they want to visit the Morona Santiago province, that, that's the, the one that we're going. Uh, since we're going south, to the southern part of that province, yeah. we uh, we can take two routes. Yeah. One that will go by Sig Sig, the place where the hats uh, yeah. are made, of, are famous for. Yeah. That route is okay. It's really nice. Uh, we'll be scenic. going all is scenic. We'll be going all the way up to the Paramo mm -hmm. here on the eastern cordillera, and then we will go down. And there is this little uh, lovely town that we got down there. The food there is nice. I like it a lot. This one is the is the best one. Okay. It is in a good condition. There is no risk when it's it has rain. Right. But now it's raining. Right. The other one is a little bit better. Uh, it goes. We have to take a detour right in this city, yeah. outside the city. It's a bit more scenic, but it's notorious for landslides. Very important tip: if you are driving here in Ecuador, or if you want to know, uh, like if you are taking like a night bus or something like that, or you are taking like a, a long distance on a bus, you always check Twitter. On Twitter, we have the official account of the emergency service of Ecuador that is the 9-11. Mm -hmm. So in Twitter you have to type ECU 9-11, ECU 9-11. Every morning they will post the status of every single road and highway here in Ecuador. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we are gonna go the Wallaceo way. So, the reason I didn't want to do Sig Sig is because I actually want to buy a hat. If you've seen my artisanal villages video, uh, then you know that in Sig Sig you can get amazing deals by buying directly from the artisans who make those hats. Cuenca you can get a good deal. Sig Sig you can get an amazing deal and they have so much like inventory there. That's where I got my hat with the blue on it. So I'm hoping to get another one for some summer travels at home. So right now this is a new route for me. We're going through Wallaceo, the valley. So where people live outside of town. Never been here. And we're gonna be on this road for about an hour. We actually need to go up to the top of the mountain and back down. But as I've explained before, about every 100 meters in Ecuador is a microclimate. So as we climb, the views are gonna change. One of the last patch of forest that we have in this part of the cordillera is like a mountain forest but it's a bit different to the one that we've seen in Cajas for instance some species are quite similar but in a way it's very different this area of course has been highly disrupted by people that's why you can see lots of clearings lots of fields for farming for farming yeah So this road is like patches of dirt road and then paved road. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge of the one that live here up in the mountains to get community, 
It's a challenge to live in the mountains. Yeah. To be connected. To be to... connected. Thank you. And yeah. Was communicated. It was. Sometimes <laughs> you know. Sometimes I swing and sometimes I hit. Sometimes it's nicer in the fog. Yeah. It's very mystical. So if you want to know why Ecuador has so many landslides, why it's this constant problem, especially right now, the last few months have been really terrible. And that's because all of these mountains had forests. And those forests captured all of the water. And so it didn't make it down to the road because plants were actually using them. Now what has happened is that people are clear cutting them to farm on and so that water just runs all the way down there's nothing to kind of capture that water like the tree did and so that water brings all the debris and then that is what's causing the landslide so it's this ongoing problem and of course they're trying to fix it by building up the walls right before the highway but that's just the band-aid the actual problem is much further up and it's with agriculture where agriculture really shouldn't be or they should be doing it in a different manner so it's not on the slopes maybe like the Inca did and also that you see in Southeast Asia where you create these terraces. But that takes more effort and it also takes either a lot of manpower and a lot of help. So we're about to go through a couple of landslides um, on Twitter, they had the mile markers or the kilometer markers, which was great. But one of the things that is concerning Andreas right now is that it's really starting to rain. And so that makes the possibility of landslides much greater. So we kind of need to get out of this section, which is known to have landslides. going to come to this spot right here it's in Plan de Milagro and um, she makes maito there here which is like an Amazonian uh, tonga where you wrap it in a leaf however she doesn't have any because right now she's on her own normally she has helpers and so she doesn't have time to be here and take care of this restaurant but also go out to get the leaves to actually wrap the food the tonga style uh, a food. What are those leaves called? Bihau? Bihau. 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 Right, so Bihau. So it's a different uh, kind of leaf and it's I think from the palm tree. A type, a type of, of palm. palm. And uh, but she just she's just on her own so she can't do it. So unfortunately not eating Maito today. But that could change. So if you're coming through here, stop at Milagro. Yeah. Andreas just said hundred percent recommended. disappointing Andreas just told me something very exciting in Wallachiza when we get there there is a place that has ribs that are supposed to be amazing so no Maito today are we gonna be able to have Maito elsewhere in the Amazon for sure oh okay so yes when you're driving through have it here I am disappointed because that place looked cool but I'm still gonna try some Maito But apparently out there it's supposed to be really beautiful. Alright, so as we talk about the Amazon in Ecuador, the north and the south, although it is one Amazon, they look very different and that's because they've evolved very differently over the last 50 years or so. So in the 60s there was an agricultural revolution. Ecuadorians started creating family farms and there was this term of lazy land and so if land was unproductive because it wasn't being farmed people could claim it. So in the south a lot of people from Cuenca came out to the Amazon to make that land productive and started uh, farming on it. So that would be you know vegetables, animals, cattle. In the north in the 70s, uh, oil companies came and they started finding oil there. 
Now they came down to the south and they could not find any oil. And so that's why when you go to northern Amazon, the infrastructure, the roads are so fantastic. But here in the south, they are not. Because in the north, they're used for, they're created for the oil companies. In the south, they're just created for the people. So now Korea built these roads, but they're broken now. And so people just have to deal with it. So what is interesting about it is that in the 70s, uh, things started to change a little bit. Ecuador started to create this national park system and so it realized that it needed to protect with national parks and reserves much of southern, the southern Amazon. And so as we talk about agriculture and cattle ranches here in the south, they can't, there is no infinite expansion because there are limits to it because of these reserves of the national parks. And then also what has happened is a lot of people have realized that this is a special place. So in recent decades, people are looking to find ways to protect the area, to create opportunities for business and tourism without uh, clear cutting, by maintaining the land. And so we're headed to Wallachiza, and Wallachiza has seen what Mindo has been able to do. And so it's really looking at creating these sustainable opportunities so locals can continue to live here to make a living, but then also protect the land. And that's why we're headed to the Southern Amazon. So Andreas was explaining earlier that um, throughout Ecuador, there are a number of uh, like fault areas and those are areas that are essentially sinking. I hadn't seen any of them before although I guess we would have driven through them through the central Andes. And so as we've driven here, you know these roads were created in what year like the 2010? Yeah. Air, that decade and some of these areas just little pockets have already sunk a little bit. So it can be a small pocket that sinks or in some cases like in the central Andes it was you know, a mountain. A, a mountain basically that fell. We made it to Wallachiza. Now, Fun fact, did you know that 74% of the people who watch my last video are not subscribed? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe below. And if you are, I would love to hear if you've been in the Amazon before. Now let's get on to the good stuff. I know you want to see my lunch because Andreas has been raving about this the whole time, that it's amazing. But guess what? I'm gonna show you in the next video. That's because we're gonna spend two days here in Wallachiza. We're gonna stay in town, show you what this largest city in Southern Ecuador's Amazon looks like. Looking at this lunch, I think we're off to a good start. See you in the next video. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.